my girlfriend left me two weeks before this. I know two weeks is not long enough to fully process a breakup and start using Tinder, but I was desperate. Within a few days, I had two girls I was talking to regularly. I asked them both out on a date for separate days, hoping one of them would be a good match for me. Unfortunately, the first one ghosted me though, so I was left with just the one, making me even more desperate. In her picture, she seemed like my perfect type. Blonde hair, blue eyes, and just really attractive. Her personality, however, left much to be desired, at least over text. She was bland and bad at conversation, but some people are just better in person, so I figured I'd give it a shot and continue with the date. I decided on a cheap restaurant that she agreed was close enough to her. On the night of the date, I got ready and drove down, then texted her that I was there and stood out in front of the restaurant. I was five minutes early, so I wasn't expecting her to show up right away, but after waiting for 20 minutes, I tried calling her. The phone rang for a few, then she answered. Hey, where are you? I'm right outside the place, I said. I waited a few seconds. Hello? She hung up without saying a word. Great, another girl ghosted me. I was embarrassed and annoyed. I got back in my car and drove home. I made myself a bowl of cereal, then chilled on the couch and tried to forget about life for a while. I passed out around 8, still on the couch. When I woke up, I reached for my phone to check the time, but I couldn't find it. I opened my eyes a bit wider and sat up, still searching for my phone. During my search, I caught something in the corner of my eye. My back door was slightly open, just barely, not even enough to see through the crack between the door, but open slightly enough so that it wasn't even with the wall, kind of like someone had pulled it partially closed so that it wouldn't make the click sound. I stood still, looking around. Everything felt like it became so quiet. I took one last quick search for my phone, then gave up and walked over to the back door. It was just as I'd said, barely not closed. I always kept every door locked, so this was a terrifying thing to see after napping just a few feet away. I thought maybe when the intruder saw me on the couch, they must have just left, but then I started thinking about my phone being gone. What if they'd stolen my phone? They would have had to be right in front of me, just inches away, probably watching me sleep. A shiver ran through my body. These thoughts were just making me more scared. I pushed the door shut and locked it, praying that whoever it was had already left. I then walked around the first floor, checking the rooms, but not finding anything worth noting. Then I went upstairs, which for some reason had me more scared. I walked down the hallway, looking in each room before I got to my bedroom. I looked around the room, under the bed, everywhere. No signs of anyone. I stepped back into the hall, closing the door. I just thought to myself how creepy this was and tried to think of the best way to contact the police without my phone. But then I heard something. Quiet, soft breathing, echoing inside the closet behind me. I froze. The longer I stood there, the more horrified I was. I ran for the stairs and went out the front door. There was a gas station at the end of the block, so I ran all the way there and got them to call the police. By the time everything was settled, nobody was in my home anymore. My phone was still missing, but that was the only thing that was gone. My account was backed up though, so it wasn't too hard to get a new phone and transfer all my apps and data. A few weeks later though, I went back on Tinder and that's when I started putting pieces together. The girl that ghosted me and creepily answered my phone call no longer existed. I thought that it would actually be possible for them to have gone to the restaurant, but instead of meeting me, followed me home. As for why they took my phone, I'm not sure. The only reason I can really think of is so that I couldn't call the police or show them their account. 
There's still a lot that doesn't make sense though. Like why they only took my phone. And what they were doing in my house while I was sleeping. I'm a 26 year old female, and at the time I was 23 and in college. I used Tinder throughout the second half of my college years. I wasn't exactly looking for a long term relationship, but I also wasn't entirely avoiding it either. If things seemed more serious, then I'd try, otherwise we'd just have some fun and move on. After school on Friday, I went back to my dorm and sat in bed, swiping left and right on the app. I was hoping to have something to do over the weekend. After some time, one of the guys responded. We talked it up for an hour or so, then he asked me out on a date for Sunday night. I agreed, though it was rather quick to ask me out. We texted for a while longer, mostly about school and hobbies. He said he went to the same school as me, but was in the dorm building on the opposite side of the campus. Anyway, on Saturday we texted back and forth a few more times, and come Sunday I met him at a popular restaurant not far from the campus. Over dinner, he didn't strike me as anything but a normal person, so normal that he was almost a little boring. I found him attractive though, and thought he was maybe holding back on a lot due to just meeting me. Once we finished, we went outside and set another date for the next week. As I said goodbye and started walking away, he asked me if I needed a ride home. Living in the dorms at the campus, I didn't have a car, so I just walked everywhere, including the restaurant. I was surprised he even had a car, since he lived at the school as well. But I was even more surprised that he offered me a ride. It seemed like he was trying to make his move for tonight, which I wasn't expecting. But seeing as I enjoyed my time with him, and he was just like any other guy, I took him up on the offer. The campus was a 25 minute walk away, so if nothing else, at least I'd be back sooner. He showed me over to his car, which was just an older black Honda SUV. I got into the passenger seat and he started driving. As soon as we were on the road, things started to get awkward. I tried making small talk, but he wasn't really responding, so I sat back and neither of us talked. After a few minutes, he took a left turn. The campus was to the right, in the complete opposite direction. I felt a lump in my throat and my body got stiff. That feeling of something awful about to happen had fallen over me. Hey, I think you missed the turn. I said nicely, trying to hide any hint of fear in my voice. No, he muttered. I was looking over at him, but his gaze was locked on the road. Where are you taking me? He didn't respond. I didn't know what else to ask. I told him to let me out of the car in one last effort to get out of the situation without anything escalating. He still didn't respond. The further out he drove, the more remote the area became. My head was aching from the fear of getting too far out to be able to find any way out of this. I still had my phone in my pocket, which I knew he was going to take as soon as we stopped wherever he was taking me. My plan, and really my only plan, was to try to take out my phone as quickly as possible and dial 911 before he would have time to react. I waited until he started making a turn, and right when he looked the other way, I pulled my phone out and with shaky hands dialed 911. He noticed immediately, trying to grab my phone mid-turn and jerking the car. I was able to keep myself away from grasp while the phone rang, and as soon as I heard a voice on the other side, I yelled for help, saying the street names and direction we were going. The man was still fighting me for my phone hitting me and pulling me toward him. In the midst of the fight, he lost control of the car and ran off the road straight into a speed limit sign. I was dizzy and my vision was blurry, probably from a concussion, but I could hear the operator on the phone talking from somewhere under my seat. 
I almost forgot the situation I was in, but once it came back to me, I immediately looked over. The windshield was shattered, and the airbags were out, but the man I was with was gone. I tried to see out the windows, but he was nowhere. I didn't even remember seeing the windshield shatter or the airbags go off, so I might have even been unconscious for a few seconds or minutes without knowing it. I searched for my phone, telling the operator what happened and that I was okay. Officers came soon after. I had no lasting injuries, just some pains around my body. But what hurts the most is that I was so sure they would catch the man, having his name, description, and license plate. But I was wrong. The car was stolen the day before, which was probably why he abandoned it after the crash. His name was likely fake, although it was a really generic name anyway, and his Tinder account was removed. So, all they have is a description of what he looked like. I should have been more careful, and I definitely have been ever since. What he planned on doing with me is something too awful for me to even think about. I just really hope that he's not out there trying to do the same thing to someone else. I met a man who I'll name as John on Tinder. He was kind and well spoken, and we had gone on four or five dates before he invited me over to his home. I'd known him for almost a month and was ready for this next step to start dating outside of the public scene. I drove over to his house at 6.30, where he said he would have a nice homemade dinner ready for us. Driving up to his house, there were two cars in the driveway. I never asked if he had roommates or anything, so I thought maybe that's what this was. I didn't see it as a bad thing but just something that he should have told me before coming over. I drove back around and parked on the curb in front of his house. I walked up to the door and rang the doorbell. John opened the door quickly with a big smile and invited me in. By now, I'd already decided in my mind that this probably isn't the right guy for me, but I didn't want to be disrespectful and fully commit to ending things after just seeing his house for the first time. The kitchen was less messy, seeming like it had been cleaned up recently. On the table were two plates of food, but after seeing the place, I didn't have an appetite anymore. I kindly told him that my stomach wasn't feeling well today and that I'd try to eat it later. His reaction, though, was off-putting. He just looked at me as if he was shocked by my answer and was in deep thought about what to say. I couldn't look him in the eyes for more than a few seconds before it just got weird. When I looked away, I think he snapped out of it. Oh, okay, it's cool. Then he took my plate and put it in the fridge. I started up a conversation, asking how his day was and if anything new was going on with him. He answered normally, but it seemed like something else was on his mind. He was looking around, trying to be sneaky about it and seemed almost nervous. Him looking around reminded me about the cars in the driveway. Hey, I saw you had a bunch of cars in the driveway. Do you have roommates? I asked politely. Uh, yeah. They're away for the weekend, though. He said. Then he got up and excused himself, saying he had to take a call, and walked back toward the living room. The way he was acting was nothing like before. I didn't like it at all. I heard him softly talking on the phone for 30 seconds, then he came back and set his phone down on the table. Sorry, he said, sitting down. I smiled, but it was getting hard to fake it. I didn't really feel safe or comfortable in his house, so I knew I needed to leave. He was looking around again, and I was just trying to get the courage to tell him that I was going to go, until a thump came from upstairs. Right when it sounded, John looked directly at me, as if checking whether or not I heard it. Give me a second. He got up and quickly walked up the stairs, and just a moment later, his phone that was still sitting on the table lit up. Normally I wouldn't snoop on someone's business like that, but I felt justified given this whole ordeal. 
I stood up and leaned over, seeing it was a text from a number that wasn't saved as a name. The text was short, reading, Do you have her yet? I stood there in a panic for a second, trying to wrap my head around the text, before I heard footsteps coming back down the stairs. I sprinted out the front door, as footsteps were quickly coming behind me from inside the house. I got in my car and floored it out of the neighborhood. I took some time to calm down as I sat in my car in my driveway, then I called the police. I didn't know if there was something going on or not, but I don't feel like I was in the wrong for believing there was. Why would he lie about nobody being home, and what was that text supposed to mean? It all added up in my mind, but the police questioned John, along with his roommate that was upstairs. They even allowed the officers to do a quick search of the home, but they found nothing pointing to any bad intentions. The officers sympathized, saying they understood my concerns and that they would have felt the same, but there just wasn't anything else they could do. So now I'm left to just hope that I took it all the wrong way and there was nothing else going on. Just a simple lie he told, and a strange message that meant nothing.